being here at the Yad Vashem, I guess, is a, uh, a good place to focus on the importance of, of Israel to the world, not only to the Jewish community in the United States or where I am in Westchester County, but uh, to the fact that, that we have here a memorial of man's inhumanity to man, at least here at the Yad Vashem, that uh, in history uh, there, there were times that uh, uh, we had to reflect on how bad a man can be to man. I think you're quite right that this is a fitting starting point, I think, to understand Israel, to understand uh, the commitment of Jews around the world and of non-Jews who understand what happened 40 years ago, the silence of the world in the face of the destruction of six million Jews and millions of others, the seeing the, the depths of depravity to which human beings could sink in, in their hatred of others. Um, I think understanding the pledge that every Jew takes in one way or another of never again, never allowing what happened 40 years ago to happen again to any people. And Yad Vashem stands as a memorial not only to the six million Jews who died, but as a constant reminder to all people and as a living reminder. And when, when one goes through there, one can relate to it and see himself or his own family, God forbid, going through the same thing. When you look at the hierarchy of Jewish organizations and Jewish philanthropy, and you know what? Let's take a minute and think about what this small group of people have done in the world. Not only have they succeeded in so many ways, economically, socially, but they have done so much philanthropy. When you think of the Jewish people, think of the monies that they have donated to do important things. In that hierarchy of philanthropy, at the top, in terms of prestige, is this group called the Conference of Presidents of Major Jewish Organizations. I went in 85 with Malcolm Holmline. He emerged as one of the top Jewish, most respected leaders in the country, perhaps the world. And the chairman of his group is Bob Sugarman. He just retired as an attorney from Wild Gottschall. I remember as a partner in Anderson, I was a tax partner, so I dealt with a lot of these law firms, one of the best. And he's here to give a statement to us. For him to take the time to come here says a lot about him, and we really appreciate that. And again, I hope playing Holmline speech did not take away from you. Where is Bob, by the way? Okay. On the other side, yeah. Bob, come on up. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Joe and, and Shirley, for inviting me uh, here tonight, and to uh, my predecessor, Richard Stone, who suggested that they invite me here tonight. Um, it, it's really a, a pleasure to share uh, the podium with Jerry Nadler, who is off to another meeting, I, I'm, I'm sure, um, and particularly to share the podium with Rabbi Potasnik, who as you've just heard, was able to give a very powerful message in only two minutes, uh, uncharacteristic of many rabbis. <laughs> um, Malcolm Honline is, is a, a legend in the community. Uh, uh, I am used to being uh, upstaged by him, and I love it, because uh, he has been the, the, chairman of the, uh, the executive vice chairman of the conference for 25 years, uh, and he is the real the, the real guts and, and, and uh, 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 soul of the conference. Uh, the conference is an umbrella organization made up of 50 American Jewish organizations, all segments of the Jewish community. Uh, we operate by consensus, and there are not very many issues on which uh, we can find consensus. Uh, I'm sure you've all heard the story of Three Jews in the room have four opinions. Um, and so 50 uh, leaders of the Jewish community in a room, you can imagine uh, how many opinions. But on one issue, we all agree. And that is to do whatever we can to make sure that genocide never again happens in our time. It will come as no surprise to you that the principal focus of the conference right now and today is to prevent Iran from the capability of producing a nuclear weapon. 
for a nuclear Iran poses a grave threat to the security of the United States and the Western world. In the three years before I became chairman of the conference, I was the national chair of the Anti-Defamation League. And I was privileged to work with our national director, Abe Foxman, who, as many of you know, is a survivor of the Holocaust. He survived because he was hidden by his Polish Catholic nanny, who risked her life to save his. Abe says all the time that when good people said no, Jews lived, gays lived, gypsies lived. And the real honor that I have tonight is to th say thank you to you and your forebears who said no and thereby saved not only all of the Jews of Albania, but also the many who fled to Albania from other countries. And it was not, as I've learned, only by transporting Jews to safe havens or to give them false papers, which was done, but it was by hiding Jews in their homes and thereby taking incredible risks as did Abe Foxman's nanny, to their own safety. But almost more than that, I salute Joe, Shirley, and all of you for the effort that you are making to ensure that the Albanian heroism during the Holocaust can be replicated in our time. We live in a world of conflict, sometimes dominated by fundamentalists like the Iranians, who would think nothing of eliminating not only Israel and Jews, but anyone who does not hew to their fundamentalist views. We need more organizations like yours to mobilize support to speak out against these atrocities. And so again, let me thank you for the privilege and honor of being here tonight to participate in this program. Thank you so much. Thank you.